it's now getting really covered in filth it's boiling but you can see why the hexamine stove has a special piece for the cup so the flames don't go up the sides and make the handles hot now to answer the question does a cold tea bag work on a hot pot it seems to work quite well an old cold tea bag will clean the residue off that's been on there for a couple of days the new mega lightweight stoves burning well we've just got a small amount of hexi in just to dirty the cup I'm going to try and clean a hot cup with a hot tea bag okay so here we go hot or cold the tea bag gets off the he residue hexamen using the tea bag on the remains of hexamen works follow it with a quick rub on the grass and you've got a nice clean ready to use cup well I'm out in one of the local country parks the weather's cold but it's not damp which is an advantage the ice isn't melting that much so it must be around about zero a couple of hours got a little chance to practice a couple of skills so let's see how it goes well we've got the small primer set up to boil a cup of water I know it's a bit of an overkill but it's a chance to practice with this stove something I don't do very often the rest of the gear is stacked away or is ready to be stacked away as soon as it's got lit so if we need to move off we can do it quickly due to the low temperatures you've got to make sure that the burner is full of meths and you let it burn through and heat up the whole system properly otherwise you get those horrible sooty yellow not very hot flames it's now going like a rocket and the water should be boiled very very quickly Now we leave it to cool before we pack it away. In the meantime, the tea's brewing. We're going to save the tea bag for later on. Well, we've disassembled it to let it cool down. We've got all the pieces together in the right place. We can see them all. We can collect them all. We can pack them all and go home with all the kit. We've left the site as we found it. No trace. And all we've got is a little bit of filming and a warm belly through a nice cup of tea. Here we've got my bivvy building kit. Starting with a bag to keep it all in. A standard British Army bivvy sheet. Some old tent poles that have sectioned down to small lengths and lightweight strong aluminium pegs and various assorted cordages. It's great to be able to chop trees and make your own stakes and pegs and poles as you go along. But for many of us, this is not an option. Here we can see the bundle of poles and pegs that I use with my bivy sheet. They started life as redundant tent poles. So I took them and chopped them down to a reasonable length. And to stop them sinking in the earth, I added walking stick caps to the bottom too. You can put the poles together in two sets of three or as a set of four and two. Or if you take the cap off one of the bottom sections and put it on the top, you can have a set of five poles and one. All of which allows you to modify the shelters you're building. Within less than five minutes, we can whack up a shelter like this. Getting a shelter up quickly is good practice. Taking it down without losing pieces is also good practice. You can test out things like how you're going to attach the tent pegs and the guy ropes. Here we've got a standard loop made with a figure of eight knot. Here we've got one of the knots that we can adjust very easily. 
and take it out very easily if we want to go back to the loop and figure of eight. For some of the shelters I used the marine knot cords but I found the knots were too far apart and they were difficult to get out. So what I've done is made new cords with the knots closer together and used figure of eight knots which allows things to be modified easily. Putting things together when you're taking down your bivvy is a bit of a problem. So what I've done is separated the things. The cords go into a Ziploc plastic bag. The tent pegs have been put in an old pack that I had from something else. This makes things faster, although it adds to the weight. It's easy enough to train when it's bright and sunny. But when it's grey and wet and miserable, it's even more valid. So get out there, train. You know it makes sense. It'll serve you well.